I'm Dave Mays, and this is Collect Call with Suge Knight. What you're about to hear are conversations, raw and uncut, with the legendary founder of Death Row Records. He's currently serving a 28-year sentence in California State Prison. His honesty, vulnerability, and current state of mind will all be heard in this groundbreaking podcast series, featuring conversations with me and many other guests who have agreed to accept Suge's Collect Call. Suge will be putting periods to all question marks while answering everything hip-hop fans worldwide want to know. History will be made and documented in real time, each week on Collect Call with Suge Knight. Suge and I both want to hear from you, so if you have any questions or input, please be sure to contact us at Breakbeat Media, authentically hip-hop. Welcome to Collect Call with Suge Knight. This is Global Tell Link. You have a prepaid call from Suge Knight. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, style 5 now. There's a couple of things that came up uh, since we did, you know, since we put out these first couple of podcasts, I want to run by you. So one of them um, with uh, Deion Sanders, you know, so um, so our boy Nick, Nick Cannon called me. He told me that uh, Deion had reached out to him after, you know, you had brought that up on on the interview we did there. And he told he told Nick, he said, uh, it is true, you know, that he was signed to Death Row Records, but he said that you got all your money back. Well, First, shout out to Nick. That's the homie. All right, Nick. Yes. Well, it's like this. Me and Dion is cool. We friends. But Dion, come on, Prime. You know the story now. Death Row was too black for you, so I walked you guys over and put out it a different way. I never got one dollar back. Never. Even the guy who did some favors for you, I took care of him. I never got one dollar back. Even, what's that commercial they be doing with the duck? What's that, what's the commercial day? Okay. Little insurance okay. commercial? Okay. Yeah, man. I had to see that on every day. That's one of the songs we did on you, Prime. Remember? Must be the money. Okay, now. You know how we do it on this uncut. <laughs> collect calls. Collect calls is the time to tell the truth. So therefore, either... Reduce the check, you pay me back, which we know is no check. Or look out for the homie. By the way, happy early birthday to my daughter Bailey. She got a birthday coming up next weekend. Go on run that check to her. You know I already know. So shit, definitely not true. Yeah, happy birthday, Bailey. Listen, man, it's, it's some uh Kind of like some some breaking news out here. I mean, you know, the whole history of yourself and and Puffy going back really to that that night of of our Source Awards together in '95, man. First of all, I'd like to thank God. Second of all, I'd like to thank my whole entire Death Row family on both sides, you know what I'm saying? I'd like to tell Tupac, keep his guards up. We ride with him. And one other thing I'd like to say, any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star and don't want to, don't want to have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the video, all on the record, dancing, coming to Death Row. I mean, it's been a, a big theme underlying hip hop ever since, you know, whatever 
it was, is, what have you. But I mean, I don't know about all that shit. Look, I don't know about all that shit because at the same time, you know, no matter who the situation is, I really ain't about trying to kick a motherfucker when he down. Yeah. But it's like this, boys with puff. Before I even jump on that situation, it's like um, the whole thing, even with the KPD shit. For 27 years, the family of Tupac Shakur has been waiting for justice. We are here today to announce the arrest of 60-year-old Dwayne Keith Davis, a.k.a. Keefe D, for the murder of Tupac Shakur. You know, um, I know a lot of people feel like I was saying, like, uh, free Keefe D. They didn't understand why I said that. I for one, wish prison on nobody, and I say that no matter who it is. Two, in KPD situation, we know each other, we got history. He ain't built that type of way for us. One of those rah-rah type of niggas. Not saying that's good or bad, but it's like this. Hey, Keith, Metro Police. If any of this shit is true, and I ain't here to say what it is and what's not. He more safer in prison than he is on the street. You know, in prison, it's a lot of protection. You know, you can only do so much. You know, you got guards and everything else, I'm quite sure. You know, we get the utmost uh, best treatment around. On the streets, any given day, anything can happen. God is forgiven, but the streets are not. So a lot of people are more safer in prison than they are on the streets. So that's doing any more justice in, in prison than the streets. And you know, I had guys that's real tight with from spook town and other places. A lot of people said some things about the cost of their freedom, and they all know what it is. Was on his head. But for us, the Puffy situation. Some even speculated Combs was involved in Tupac's death. He denies that. You know, I really, really, really got to have a real conversation with Snoop. And I know I got a bro named Jaime. He said, he be talking to Mike. It's like Mike's show. He said, Snoop gets a prop. They speak. But that's another shit. The reason why I gotta have a conversation with him about is that I've been doing that young dude a long time. He ain't young no more, but I've been doing it since he was a young man. And I did everything in my power to make sure he kept his freedom. Murder was the case that they gave me. I'm innocent. For almost two years, Snoop has been out on a million dollars bail paid by Death Row Records. And I knew that Pac did everything right about him by putting on all eyes on me, speaking about him and being real with him. And if it's true what they say. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Uh, face to face is gonna be a lot of explaining to do. You know, because number one, Warren did a thing where he was on there talking, whatever was shit they be doing out there, and he said that Snoop had a radio. He was at Snoop House when the shit happened. I heard a horn, bing, 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 honking in front of my house. Mm -hmm. I looked out the house, and Snoop was outside in a uh, a white motherfucking Rolls Royce. Then he had this, the, the, the next tail back there. Remember the motherfucker? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He had the motherfucker could go that whatever it was, it was hitting him all the way from what was going on from Vegas. Uh -huh. And then he started getting calls and shit, and they was telling him that Tupac got shot and da 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 Only way you have a ready though, know, if you was at the fight with us and you had a security detail. I'm not having security detail. What are you doing with the radio? Two, we always go to the fight together. We always go to the club together. 
he gonna need that half ass watered down movie on pot. And he said, you gonna be at the fight? And all that type of shit. <laughs> so then all of a sudden, Warren says on the screen where they listen to the radio and they hear the gunshots. And basically somebody told them we got them or they got shot or all this shit. So how would you know that? Why would you have a play-by-play on the radio? I kicked everybody out. Get the fuck out of here, everybody. Get out of here, man. And he took off. That's when he went to Vegas mm-hmm. to go see him. And that's when he went out there and when he went to the hospital. But I had, if I wouldn't have talked to him and, and, and got him to come over to my house, he probably would have been right there in the car with them. He said Snoop kicked him out. Then he came to the hospital. Snoop never came to the hospital. Period. Then, Dash was on some other shit. I really hate bringing up Dash because I take mental health serious and I know he got mental problems, but Dash was on a situation saying that <clears throat> Snoop told him they can't go to the fight, can't go to the club, can't go to Vegas. He's going to fuck shit up because something's going to happen, basically. Were you in Vegas? No, we heard about it because they was trying to get us to go to Vegas. And we was like, Dog Pound, we was really on our fuck death row shit, really. You know what I'm saying? We was, uh, already, saying, we was already saying fuck death row. Um, Dad was like, no, I'm not going to that shit. You want to roll with them? You're going, it's going to be all the bloods there, blah, 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 and none of the homies are going to be there. And I was like, dang, I didn't really think of it like that. I don't really feel uncomfortable, but... Now that you're saying like that, he's like, Snoop ain't going. Like, why would you want to roll? Why, we don't roll like that. You roll you roll with death row when the homies roll. And I was like, you right. So I ran back over there and I told Bach, like, Bach, I probably ain't going to be able to roll. I was like, that's one thing. Then badass to an interview. And, you know, Pac being Pac, Pac was a real, real, real good motherfucker about getting everybody involved. So he seen badass, badass told the story. He said, Dad, what you doing? He said, well, they ain't putting me on that. He said, come on, I'll put you on the song. So he put badass on, smuckle on, uh, on one of the songs, he blew badass up. Now your Pac put him on the song, Pac said, man, I'm gonna let you, I'm, you can go to the fight with me. So Pac was like, um, I, you can go to the fight with me after the fight, we're going to the club. He said that, Daz told him, well, you can't go, something's gonna happen, basically Pac or me, whoever, you go, it's gonna fuck shit up. He said that he was living with his mother and living with Daz, so he had to listen to Daz and not go to the fight. So I ran back over there and I told Bach, like, Bach, I probably ain't going to be able to roll. And he was like, that's what's up? He was like, well, you know, well, I'll catch you, you know, when I come back and blah, blah, blah. And we chopped it up. And that was the last time I ever talked to him. Like, after, after when he got ready to leave, like we said, we said our goodbyes. And that was the last time I ever seen him or talked to him in life. Now, if all these people knew what was going on in the situation, nobody never commented to kill anybody that. So you're part of it. You're part of that snake, you know what happened to the snake, 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 snake. So the other situation is that even after this shit, a motherfucker was with Keith E.D., according to Keith E.D. and everybody else, and everybody know this, street know this, I was locked up. But Snoop, Daz, and the rest of them, they did a song with one of the niggas from that, from that side who was in the car. And that's Lowe the Pot. Shit. Motherfuckers don't need that type of loyalty. Who was it? And that's like the shit. Who did do the song with? What you mean, who was it? Who did the compilation? The person who did the compilation was that nigga Dre, or whatever his name is. 
So, you know, he ain't here, but that's that. But like I said before, if Keithy D tells the truth, all the other shit makes sense, what is the problem? And then when you even look at the other situation, why would Frank make up a lie and say when we was going to MGM, Orlando tried to take Pac's chain? He said that to the police. And then I heard he went to the grand jury and said and say he lied. He said a security person told him to lie. Why? Or why would people turn around and say that my two or three-year-old daughter, she probably been three at the time, was basically going to be with me at the fight, at the club, and go ride the way when there's that I bought, and somebody else said they bought them too. I don't buy shit with nobody but myself. Security don't buy shit with me. But that's a lie. So when you look at all these things and you look at all these people who do these other interviews and they shoot themselves in the foot, they can't go back and erase it. So when you look at all those, all those facts and you turn around and say, why is all these different stories about one incident? But the thing about it is like this. In the 30 years, this incident, they use this incident against me to try to run me. So what I mean by that, they put the narrative out there that I had Pac killed. Even though I got a bullet inch in, inch in my skull still today. They put the narrative out there with a lie saying, Baby Lane shot him, which he wasn't a shooter. Then they put it out there where it cost me $200 million on one deal, another hundred some million dollars on another deal. And what I mean by that, what I did for the MCA before they was Universal and Universal, all that stuff, I brought billions of dollars to these people. They turned around, Pac started off with in the scope. They turn around and use the, the media to beat me out my bread. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Bump me out my company and my freedom. And what I mean by that, the first time I went to court, and they sent me to prison, their whole thing was Tupac is everybody's favorite rapper, which is true. He in the car with me, and, and I had him killed. Suspects or motive in the murder of rapper and actor Tupac Shakur. So that gives them the reason that railroad me and send me to prison and nobody say nothing about it. This case I'm in here for now, the first thing the DA said was Tupac and, and asked the judge, anybody do you know Tupac? Who don't know Tupac? They said, yeah. Well, Tupac was in the car with him. He ended up dead, like I had something to do with it. So they justified him to overlook the fact that it was a hit out on me and people had guns and I ended up in prison because I didn't die and somebody else did. Makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you look at that part of it. Then you look at the scenario how everybody used Pac to make their stuff famous or make their project better. You got people who use their songs with Pac and tell them how much they love Pac, but they do songs with Puffy. You got... Steve Harvey, old bitch ass. You know, this motherfucker tell him, well, fuck Pac, according to everybody else. He brings um, Snoop and Puffy on there and say, these are dudes who's running this shit in the East Coast, West Coast shit. What's up, Snoop? What's up, huh? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, wait a minute, fellas here. Hold up. You know, I know all about this East Coast, West Coast rivalry thing here, but we in Chicago now. This rivalry stuff, we got to stop it, man. We stop that, we stop a lot of this violence. Yo, Steve, check this, man. All that East Coast, West Coast stuff is a bunch of media hype. It's been my dog from day one, you know what I'm saying? It's all good between me and him. That's my peoples. For real, that's what we came here for. We came in and light it up and ride it up. We made music for him. Now, fuck Pac. If you love Pac so much, how you with the motherfucker that everybody say got something to do with the first get down that happened to Pac in New York? Then the second one. Since you want to bring up the source award, Dave, it's like this. The minute Keisha kept calling me 
And if it weren't for Keisha, trust me, he and Pac wouldn't have had a conversation. Keisha had been to her cigars. Keisha kept calling and calling and calling until she talked to me. So, love you, Keisha. Is Thank war- you. Hell yeah, definitely. Keisha is part of history. It wouldn't have been, Pac didn't reach out to nobody else. Everybody said they would have bailed him out. They would have did this. All that's a lie. I can even take the credit for that. It was Keisha. So Keisha made that happen. I made everything else happen. But the minute I talked to Pac and I started fucking with Pac, he told me what happened between in the studio and who was behind it. He felt and this and that. So I ain't, I ain't shit watered down to fake about me. You know, I am who I am. I don't got to be a motherfucker who had a different job or did to different things besides what I do. All the people who are doing these podcasts and talking, they tell us some of the stories about me to make themselves famous. If you really want to get famous, don't make up no stories. Wait till I'm there and get in my motherfucking face and express yourself no matter who you are. But back to the situation with Pac. Once I start talking to them, he explained everything, how they sent him up at the studio. Ain't no either or. Ain't no gray area with me. If I'm fucking with you, I'm fucking with you. If I'm not, I'm not. So at that point that Pac decided to lie with me and be on Delph Row, his friends became my friends. His enemies became my enemies. So at the source of war, Everything I said was motherfucking true. Any artist out there want to be an artist and want to stay a star, and don't want to and won't have to worry about the executive producer trying to be all in the videos, all on the records, dancing, come to death row. I'm not going to go up there and hug a motherfucker who has something to do with the homie getting shot up. So yeah, what, what did I say? One true. If you don't want a motherfucker all in your motherfucking videos, they could have came to death row that would have happened. Because at the end of the day, that motherfucker was all in the motherfucking video still today. And he benefited when Biggie wasn't here. Because if Biggie wasn't here, he wouldn't be rapping. Once Biggie wasn't here, that motherfucker started rapping. When Pac left, I didn't pick up a microphone. I picked up the pieces. But as far as Puff doing the shit he did, it's only obvious what he's involved in at the same time, right? In the scope universe, the same. They gave Puffy a deal in the first 50 million, 100 million, that project flopped. They turned around and gave him another deal and that project flopped. But instead, you can steal my shit on some bullshit. Then when you really look at it, I look at it like this. What Puffy done, what Puffy did, or what Puffy do, it's not a surprise. Everybody know what it is. Hip-hop mogul Sean Diddy Combs has been accused of beating and sexually assaulting his ex-girlfriend and singer Cassie. I mean, you got to, to be able to do that type of to a woman and other women but it's not new, it's not like it's uh, new news, shit. Same time he beat the shit out of motherfucking, uh, what's the little girl name, uh, Cassie or whatever. He had an assistant by the name of Capricorn. He felt Capricorn, Cap was keeping his shit on a low about if she was messing with Cuddy or not. Puffy beat the shit out that bitch. Not only did he beat the shit out of her, it was an Interscope person, the Interscope's check that paid her to settle or he wouldn't go to jail. You've heard of the golden rule, haven't you? Whoever has the gold makes the rules. Hmm. Now, there's a time where they say they're not gonna put out records where people cuss and degrade women. Dre even did a thing on MTV uh, interview and says, I would never curse on a record. I would never call a woman a bitch. I would never say these type of things again. 
and I'm gonna do only records that are custom. That's why they said they couldn't distribute their fro because we, my artists cursed too much. So they put out an album called Aftermath. First song was Who Been There, Who Done It, it flopped. But even the people who wrote all these songs never get paid. But then, or a mother who's a bitch beater, they can do the Super Bowl and get an award. Plus, he can beat the shit out of two bitches and they pay for it. And he get an award. And for his having somebody, you know, have male, male prostitute fucking your, your bitch, that's some weirdo shit. But it's not nothing new. Everybody know that Puffy did the fucking Gus ran in for the longest. That's not like it's new news. Why you think him and Russell was friends? Not that I want to see Puffy go to prison or anybody else. I still I still feel that way. But at the end of the day, uh, he'd never get charged or go to prison. I mean, he make too much money for the people that he basically work for or have a business for. And when you look at it, he got lawyers and her lawyers are smart also. They left some in, but they didn't go all the way. They basically went like, okay, they ain't gonna say he was participating with the male prostitutes also, because they didn't have to make it make, like she was uh, a part of it. And then they weren't gonna say he was, because they gotta leave some out and get them to settle for that thirty million. You know, and they, you know they had those side those side meetings, like you know, shit. We didn't say we didn't say the part why. They were testing your guts out. Everybody know they've been testing your guts out. So let's settle or that's coming out if we have to fight it. So I'm quite sure they're going to settle like ASAP. Right before the Super Bowl, a girl came forward and recorded Drake threatening her and had some else threatening her and what they was going to do to her and bring home to her. A lawyer got it. At one time, Drake wasn't talking to Mike. The, Mike got it from the lawyer, took it to Drake. Dre, now Dre be silently giving Mike and Snoop money to try to help their shit. You know, it's a it's a it's a cat and mice game all around the industry. I mean, shit. Wale never spoke on the fact that what happened to him with Cuff, just like D Pain was over there on the island. And he claimed they were trying to get a little fresh with him, but he's probably going to deny it. But everybody know the truth. His people had to run a boat to go get the motherfucker off the lot island. But you know, it's still the same shit. I'm not looking to see now motherfucker get caught up. And if they get out the first one or get out this one, anyone, they better watch because they're still coming, you know. Puffy, I don't want to see you go down. But if you need a celly, I'm gonna grant your ass my single boy. <laughs> Had you cook game working, I don't want no head, but you're gonna be cleaning the toilet. But at the same time, I'm not looking to be happy and aggressive because another black man did some fucked up weirdo shit because it's not about Puffy, but Puffy had kids. Puffy had two daughters. I don't think it'd be fair for anybody to, to uh, you know, pull that motherfucker through the rules publicly because they're thinking about his two daughters. But at the same time, my kids, I have kids. Nobody gave a fuck. You know, my son, I have, just had a son, Sosa, that's graduated from film school. He hears shit. My youngest son is legend. Legend just turned 14. And we talk about everything. Always talk. All through the day. And my son said, hey, I love all Tupac shit. I still listen to his music. That's my favorite rapper. Fuck that, right? He said, why was these motherfuckers going around lying saying you had something to do with it? You killed Tupac. Knowing it's not true. But now they know the truth, or they put it out there. Uh, they never not once have, I got an apology, got reimbursed, or them attacking my mother, and the people attacking my family publicly for something I had nothing to do with. But when the shit flips, it's a lot of people part of that circle. You know, that circle of you can have a wife and you can have kids, but 
you're part of that hidden, that hidden room. That this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. And it's going to come to a time where they better fix this shit, and what you owe me, you better run it. What you got mine, you better run it back. Because you might be to the age where you're leaving this world, because we're all going to leave here. Nobody's going to leave here alive.